Hi everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to be sharing five tips that will help make your transition from hires to advanced hires more smooth and hopefully less stressful. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm actually going to explain what hires are and what advanced hires are. If you're a student studying in Scotland, you probably have a good idea of what these subjects are anyway, but just to give you a little primer on what they are. So in S5, which is I think basically equivalent to year 12 and is when you're around, I'd say like 15, 16, you do five subjects um, that are your kind of gateway entry into university if that's the path you choose to go down. And they are hires that usually do um, piggybacking off of Nat 5s, which you do the year before. And transitioning from Nat 5s to hires is like transitioning from, I would say, like an iPhone 6 to an iPhone 8. It's not, it's tough, but it's not like really hard. And then in sixth year, which is like year 13, you have the option. And here I say option because in fifth year, hires, you just kind of have to do it. In sixth year, you theoretically have the choice and the option to delve even deeper into a subject and do advanced hires. Um, in that subject and that is equivalent to first year of university and advanced hires I would say are quite tough and usually people like I don't know anybody who did five advanced hires and I don't think that's recommended either that would be way too much workload so people kind of like sub specialize even more and go down into even less um of their subjects so say in hires we were doing English, maths, music, biology and chemistry maybe advanced hires you would do biology, chem, maybe English like you would you would narrow it down even more. Personally, I would say the jump from hires to advanced hires is like transitioning from an iPhone 8 to an iPhone 13 Pro Max Plus Plus, no home button, like navigating that is quite tough, or at least personally it was um for me. So that's why I'm here to share five tips that will hopefully make um your transition more smoother and easier. I know the academic year has already started, but hopefully some of the tips I give um can help you. Just a caveat, this is all coming from personal experience. I'm someone who's recently just gone through their advanced hires. So I just did my advanced hires this year, did my exams this year. So I, it's fresh in my mind. That's I think I'm a pretty good source of uh, tips and I did fairly decent in them as well. But yeah, I'm not an expert, I'm not a teacher. So the first tip that I have for you guys is that you need to be the person to take initiative and have a sense of independence. And you might be like, what do you mean by that? Basically, I felt in my hires that you had a sense of independence and a sense of like, it's on you, the onus is on you. But I would say in sixth year, I would say in advanced hires, all the onus is on you. The teachers, the people that are, they, they are there to support you. Don't worry if you ask some questions, if you ask for help, um, they will help you. But you need to take responsibility. You need to schedule in your times when you need to study. You need to schedule in, okay, this is when I'm gonna work on my dissertation. Okay, this is when I'm gonna work on my um, folio. You need to be the one that, there will be free periods that you'll have probably in school. You need to be the one being like, yes, I will study during my free periods or I will do something productive or I'll do this, I'll do that. And that's a personal choice that you have to make. No one is gonna be there to hold your hand. No one is gonna be over your shoulder being like, you need to do this. And I know that this isn't really a practical tip or something that you can just apply straight away, but I think it's a mindset that's really, really important to have and important to remember, especially at the beginning, because a lot of the time I did feel overwhelmed and I did feel stressed because it felt like a big jump and it felt like I had all this responsibility. But what I'm saying is you should take it positively and take it more in your stride. And if you haven't had to develop kind of discipline before, if you haven't had to think, really carefully about what you're doing and how you're studying then I think this is the year to try and build that especially if you're going to go into university next year or college or any pathway even if you're going into a job you need to be able to have responsibility you need to be able to come into work on time and do these things by yourself so I think that's my first kind of tip is to kind of have that mindset to go in like I hope this doesn't come as a surprise because it kind of it, it just makes sense because you're you're the top of the school, you're the oldest, you have other responsibilities that are um, sometimes inflicted upon you, um, not by choice, and you have to kind of just take them as it is. And um, yeah, so this is more of kind of like a mindset to have and something that I think is worth mentioning um, as a tip and will make your transition smoother. If you just think like that and think like, okay, this is in my hands, I can control what I can and what I can't do. Independence is key and I think that's a theme that you will see 
recurring uh, within these tips and even like on the first day like my school didn't offer advanced hires um uh, for a variety of reasons so i went into uni a university in my city and i had to meet loads of new people on the first day and we wanted to introduce ourselves and even just introducing yourself and um saying like this is my name like do you guys want to start a group chat things like that that's already taking initiative and already um being more independent um but yeah i think um not doing my advanced hires in school was also quite a big challenge i think that um also added on to the stress and pressure so you might be a different experience if your school or if your school is offering the advanced hires that you want to do but so the next tip that i would like to give is collaboration and what i mean by this is if you haven't harnessed the, tip, the power of teamwork yet in fifth year or in fourth year i think sixth year is the perfect time to do it um set up that group chat with people in your class i know it's kind of hard and daunting to be the person being like oh can we set up a group chat but it will come so in handy because you'll have somewhere to put all your resources you know if you put in that resource and be like oh i found this link and this teacher explains this concept really well and uses this really interesting diagram that I think is probably helpful and our teacher didn't do that so you put that in the group chat then people will be appreciative and hopefully put something back that they've also found um, and you're just creating an, a really good environment um, for yourself and texting your friends and being and having like accountability buddies and going to the library together and trying to study to the best of your abilities sometimes that ends up not being productive but a thing that me and my friend Lula did um, when we were studying for Advance Our English was that whoever breaks the silence first in talks has to pay for lunch for like the both of us um, and that worked like a charm like whenever we did that no one spoke so just having that and you could also have like a wee reward at the end of the day get a smoothie get lunch get a drink or something um really helps and, and also if you think about it teaching someone else teaching a concept that you understand really well and helping your friend grasp it will a like help you understand the topic even more and i think that's like scientifically proven and stuff like that and b will also give you a sense of satisfaction of helping your friend um you know when you're going through these qualifications it's easy to feel alone and isolated when you're just in your room staring at a blank wall trying to get started to work but if you're with your friends and studying even over zoom or anything i think um it helps a lot and for me it helped a lot as well because if i was really stressed and worried and like or if i was really unmotivated and being like i really don't want to do this i'd see my friend like clicking clicking away at her laptop and i'd be like okay we can do this we can do this we can do this so i think that's um a kind of important tip that you should have and it's quite a general tip as well but it links in pretty well with kind of initiation so if none of your friends are often to study together be that friend and I was that friend that was like, hi, come and me, hi, come and me, hi, come and me. But it works. And nine times out of ten, someone else also wants that type of motivation. So I also would say speak to people who have already done it. Um, that's kind of a tip within this kind of whole collaboration thing. If you have friends that are in, that were in the year above, I know they've probably left school by now, but send them a wee text being like, hey, what are your top ten tips for study someone studying advanced biology? Or can I have your textbook? Or can I have your notes? Or... Um, or something or whatever i know that if if someone that i know who's in sixth year now reaches out and asks me for tips i'd be more than um happy to help them so tip number three is update your software now what do i mean by that if we're stretching the apple metaphor <laughs> as simply as we can then apple always updates their software always updates their security so it updates everything you know and i think you can take this time and in as a new beginning but also as a time for reflection, reflect back on your fifth year results. Think about, okay, where did it go wrong? Where did it go right? Objectively, you know, like it's it's probably hard if maybe you've not done as well as you wanted to and that's tough, but the best thing you can do is think back and be like, hmm, okay, for this subject, did I just highlight all of my notes and never rewrote them or never made flashcards or never really did that many past papers for it okay how can I change that just kind of thinking and reflecting on your toolkit that you had you know like change up your study methods maybe do some things that are like different okay so if you've been in a mind map person for higher history then maybe if you're doing higher history maybe try some flashcards for your essays instead and I, and I think you can see the results of this through like kind of mini essays that you're doing or mini tests or um things like that one caveat to this is that if you're needing kind of maybe prelim time you know those prelims are important in 
um, getting your estimate, which I know is really important for us, um, and you want to try a new study method or it's really close to your exam date, I would maybe hold off from trying a new study method if the one for you is already going well because um, you don't want to kind of jeopardise something and, and it might not work out for you so you want that buffer and you want that time period to be like okay this doesn't work let's go back to this or let's try something else um, so I would just to read a scream out I would try not to do that near times of big assessments. I would also say this even applies within a subject so anecdotally like when I was doing higher biology um, our teacher would just put up the kind of um, slides on PowerPoint just up on the board um, and then we would just copy that. She'd be like copy this down, copy this down, copy this down and we'd just copy it down and she'd talk us through it and stuff like that and I would create like my own shorthand for those notes because I'd not go back and see them anyway but there was it's quite a lot of content but there was enough to like get it written down in, in, in like one period and, and we spent a lot of time in that and that was good, that was fine, that worked okay. But for advanced hair biology, our teacher just printed out the kind of PowerPoint slides and gave this to us. And I kid you not, I think I threw them out, which maybe I shouldn't have, but they were, they were like, unit one was this thick, unit two was like that thick as well, and unit three was a little bit thinner, but like, it's so much content that you physically could not write those notes. And if I had just went in and be like, okay, I'm gonna write down, if it's not the teacher saying, then I wouldn't have gotten anywhere. And halfway through the year, I kind of was like, wait a minute, why am I trying to write the stuff that's already written down? Like I just highlight, I just draw key diagrams or take pictures of key diagrams. And that's already a day of study method that's changed for me, you know, and I made mind maps in higher biology and that took quite a bit of time, but I thought it was a good way to consolidate my knowledge. Could not do that in advanced higher biology personally because it just took too much time. So I, I just stuck to, making flashcards and just copy and pasting information from the slides that was like in SQA language and then memorizing that. I didn't, I made, I think I made one mind map of area like 3.1a and then gave up after that. So that just shows even if you think your study method is working for that subject in fifth year, it might not work in sixth year because the course content may be different, the way the course is taught, the structure might have changed or something. So that's just, even if you think your study methods are great, reflect and revamp and think about things like space repetition if you haven't heard of that think about active recall if you haven't heard of that look up anki look up quizlet look up alternative ways of studying because like the internet is your oyster like youtube there's so many amazing people on youtube that teach productivity stuff like i know that the kind of the basis of productivity and and studying not even productivity, sorry, studying well or like space repetition and active recall. And I'll link, I'll leave links down below to people who can explain these concepts way better than me. Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely go and research that a little bit. Um, while you have the time at the beginning of the year, because as the year goes on, it will become quite stressful and quite hectic. Next tip, uh, tip number four, also works into tip number three a little bit. As I said in the last sentence, look into the specific subject that you're studying which means read the course spec please the course spec is like it's like your bible it's like the structure of the course like that and past papers are like so important like they're like the two most important things that you can probably have um when you're studying the course material this is a picture of um an SQ course spec if you haven't seen one before um and this contains literally everything that you need to know basically about the course there's also different like documents that are specifically for teachers and like understanding standards but i think start with the course spec first um because i'll take advanced higher english as an example you need to know at the beginning of the year how your grade is made up for instance in maths you could go into the advanced higher maths course spec look through it okay this is differentiation okay in fifth year is pretty good differentiation oh this is probably a step up from that i'll probably be okay with that oh maybe i wasn't so great at vectors oh there's vectors in advanced higher maths okay before we move on to vectors i'll go over higher vectors again and make sure that i'm familiar with that things like that like just going through the course spec sounds really simple and stuff but i think it can be really valuable to to go through that and to read up on that and biggest tip um from all these tips is ask for help when you need it and i'm not talking about academic help i'm talking about mental health support it's so important um to reach out when you're kind of struggling and i don't mean to sound peachy or anything I, I, this is coming from such a sincere place because i know because i know how hard it is set these exams i know how hard it is 
being in your last year of high school and trying to process that, also processing uni applications, college applications, and just life is quite hectic in sixth year and it's quite stressful. So it's always good to have um, places where you can reach out for support, having healthy coping strategies, knowing that this is what you can do to reduce the stress. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it to the end of this video. And I just wanna say, hopefully that this can help someone who is also experiencing, also going through hires to advance hires, that transition, that big jump for the first time, or anyone really in a position of a big change and stuff. I think it can be applicable if you're moving into uni um, from high school and stuff. Um, so generally, um, I think, Hopefully this is helpful to anyone, even if you're not studying SQE subjects. So I want to see if you have any more suggestions of videos I should make kind of about the SQE, maybe explain um, the difference between kind of NAP hires, hires, advanced hires, or going into the specific advanced hire subjects that I studied. Um, so I did advanced hire biology and advanced hire English and did pretty well on both of them. So I can give out um, maybe tips um, and tricks. Um, for those subjects that are quite specific, I have some kind of practical websites and podcasts and YouTube channels that really, really help me. Um, so it'd be good to pass on those resources. Yeah, I'm going to stop talking and hopefully see you in the next video.